All right. Good morning. Happy Friday. Friday the 14th. New setup here. Uh, this is actually my work setup, working from home. Kind of nice. A little, uh, little more professional here. I like the headset and the microphone. Deters some of the uh, outside noise here. So, college football season 2020. Is it happening? Is it not? No. It's not. It's not happening, guys. Uh, you know, I hate to be the Debbie Downer, and um, I know that right now the ACC, SEC, Big 12, and a couple other smaller conferences are still planning on, you know, trying to trying to move forward with a season, but it's not going to happen. Um, half the conferences have already bowed out. Two of the f- five Power 5 conferences have bowed out. At some point in the next, uh, you know, five, six weeks before games actually start, the NCAA is going to step in and say, you know what, uh, we're just going to call it and we're going to try to do it in the fall, which isn't going to happen either. Uh, Logistically, it's just impossible for, you know, to expect these players to go through a potential 24 to 30 game schedule. Um, in a matter of eight months, it's it, it's really just not possible, especially with pro days and uh, spring practice and the NFL draft and the NFL combine and all of those things. Um, having football in the spring really just is not going to work. And I hate to be that guy, uh, but I just I don't see a season happening, and I don't I, I don't agree with it. Um, because, you know, like a lot of parents and even medical doctors have said, um, these kids being on campus, they are in a bubble while they are on campus. You know, they are in these facilities that are created for these football players. They're with doctors and trainers and medical staff all the time. They are being tested constantly. Um, where else are they going to get that treatment? You send these kids home, you make them do online school, do you think the risk of them getting the virus just goes away? No. Um, And sports have proven that. You know, the general population is somewhere around 6-7% overall positive test rate right now. So the general public, you and I, are in that 6-7% positive rate right now. No other sport is higher than 2%. Um, And there are sports that are not in the bubble. Yes, they are lower risk, uh, baseball and golf being the main two that are not in a bubble. Um, But it has been proven if you follow the protocols that are in place and you don't go out to the casino and out to the nightclubs and to the bars, um, your chances of catching this are very, very low, even lower than just being a normal citizen doing normal social events. Um, So, you know, I I don't agree that there is a higher risk uh, of them being on campus or playing football. I don't think that that changes, you know, their level of, of risk as far as catching the virus. But it is what it is, you know. That's that's today's society. This isn't 1918 during the Spanish flu um, when college football still happened, and there were stand you, you know there were fans in the stands during the Spanish flu. They were wearing masks, um, but a lot of people died. So, you know, do you want to repeat history and, and give that a shot? That's you know that's kind of the path that uh, that they're looking at. Um, but the biggest factor that has come into all this is them saying they don't know the long-term effects uh, of COVID and, you know, potential heart conditions and things of that nature, which the heart condition that they are speaking about, and again, I'm not a doctor, but this heart condition that they're speaking about um, is actually developed any time you get a common cold or the seasonal flu, um, and it's caused by inflammation in the body. And it, your your heart literally can swell. Um, but again, that happens with the common flu and, and uh, or the common cold and the seasonal flu. Um, I don't know that that's a long term 
effect or you know side effect of covid uh we don't know we don't know the long-term effects of covid we don't know the long-term effects of the vaccine that are that's going to be released in the next two three four months um but everybody's hopping on that train you know oh i'm going to get the vaccine as soon as it comes out and i'm going to be safe well five years from now that vaccine may cause brain cancer i mean you don't know that um so this whole society that we're living in that has canceled college football of well we don't know what's going to happen we're not going to risk it um it's reality and i think eventually at some point again over the next six weeks the sec the acc and the big 12 and the other smaller conferences uh, are probably gonna step in and say okay ncaa we met with them they said no uh sorry it is what it is so what does that mean for uga means a lot uh jamie newman's not coming back guys i'm sorry he's not he's not going to stay for an extra year of eligibility dude's gonna be like 24 years old um it, it's just not happening jt daniels is already in place he's already eligible carson beck is there brock vandegrift will be coming in um jamie newman's just not gonna come back he's gonna have his pro day he's gonna go to the combine he's gonna shine he's gonna do well he's probably gonna get drafted in the first uh late first round early second round um and he will go down as the best georgia quarterback to never take a snap so he will in my eyes he will be the best Georgia quarterback that will never take a snap on the field. Um, and it, it's a shame, you know, it really, it sucks. Um, because I think that he had the potential, obviously, um, of really changing our offense and, you know, being a dynamic playmaker. And he's, you know, he's been in place now for, five six months he's been able to learn Todd Monken's offense um and I I think that it I think it's really gonna hurt um not only that but the other players that we could potentially lose that don't come back I mean Richard LeCount immediately comes to mind I mean who are we replacing him at safety when we really have not taken any stud safeties in the last couple of years um, I mean, Lewis Seen, he will be coming back, but who do we throw back there um, now that Devon Wilson's gone as well? You know, who who do we put back there to match up with him? I mean, Major Burns, I, I Chris Smith, um, you, do you throw Tyreek Stevenson back? You know, I, I just don't know, guys. It, it really scares me. Um, I don't know that Eric Stokes comes back. Not that I'm really worried about corner at UGA because we have just taken ridiculous uh, talent at the cornerback position over the past couple of years. Um, but does Zamir White come back? He's eligible now. Uh, he may decide to, you know what, just do his pro day, go to the combine, and get drafted. Um, he, he probably would get drafted even though he's only started one game, which is insane. But that's what we're dealing with in these times. There's going to be a lot of instances of that where a player has only played a couple games or maybe only played one season, and they're going to be first-round draft picks. Mike, uh, the kid from Miami, Brousseau, defensive end, he had one. He started one season. He played in all 14 games, 13 games that they had last year. He was a stud. He had like 15 sacks. He's going to be probably a top 10, top 15 pick um, after just one season. You're going to see a lot of that. Um, and UGA has a lot of redshirt sophomores and juniors that are draft eligible that may decide to forego uh, their eligibility at UGA and enter the draft. So I hate to come on here and be the – you know, the Debbie Downer and, and say the season isn't happening. I wish I could get on here and be super pumped and say, you know what, we're doing it. Big 12's doing it, ACC, SEC, we're doing it, and it's going to be great. Uh, but the fact of the matter is it, 
it's just not going to happen. Uh, I truly, I truly do believe that. And you may disagree with me. You may think that they're going to move ahead with this. I just think they're going to pull the plug, and I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. If I had to guess, they're going to pull the plug here in uh, two to three weeks, and uh, that'll be it. And we will not see college football again until August, September uh, of 2021. So, you know, I don't even know what that means for me if I'm going to continue doing videos. Right now, there's not even a, you know, obviously this is a very tough time to talk about college football because the landscape is changing every day. Um, so, you know, I put up a prediction video of Georgia's schedule uh, a month ago or so, and that has completely changed. So n everything that I just did a month ago in that video means absolutely nothing because that's not our schedule. Um, we aren't playing 12 regular season games. We aren't going 11 and one. That's just the fact of the matter. So it makes it really hard to do these videos moving forward without having um, knowledge of what is actually coming. I hope that I can continue making these videos. Um, you know, maybe some more recruiting news will come out. We did get Brock, uh, Brock Bowers this week, which he's the number two tight end in the country. Uh, Todd Hartley keeps, you know, reeling these stud tight ends in. And uh, that seems to be a position that we never really have to worry about from a talent standpoint. Um, so that's good. But UGA is still very slow in recruiting for 2021. And to be honest, the dead period was just extended to September 30th. Um, so no, uh, no visits or anything like that unless these kids do it on their own dime on their own time. Um, and a couple, you know, a couple are doing that. Brock Bowers was one of them. Um, he did go to go to Athens on his own dime on his own time and he ended up committing which is great but not every kid can do that um, and so it is it's going to hurt UGA if we cannot get kids on campus at all before National Signing Day UGA will not finish with a top three class um, we would have to flip a tremendous amount of talent to finish with a top three class top five is probably still attainable um, but we are losing, we're losing out on a lot of guys that we had on our radar, and it is very concerning. I've been saying it since May. People called me crazy. Here we are in the middle of August, and guys, the, the script has not changed. We are, we are whiffing on our main targets. Um, so hopefully that changes. Hopefully we get some flips on, you know, signing day. And uh, hopefully I can continue to make some videos. I really enjoy doing these videos, even if it doesn't bring you any new information. It's just something that I like to do. Gives me something to look forward to. Um, hopefully gives you a, maybe a little bit of insight or just even a different perspective uh, on what people are thinking. So unfortunately, again, I think the 2020 football season is canceled. If it's not, I will come on here and say, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I'm glad we're playing. But right now, I just don't see it happening. Um, you guys stay safe. Hopefully, we will see you soon. Go dogs.